Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and I used to be the craziest motherfucker in the harbor. And my name is Dustin, and you are going to regret wearing white. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest, or in this case, fucking adrenaline-infused endings. No kidding. You know what's funny is I you you did use the word white, but I thought the line you were going to open with is, who is this white fucking dickhead? <laughs> That was my. That was one of my backups. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, great line, man. White boy Bobby is an icon. <laughs> yeah, an icon. That's a great way of describing him. An absolute. Like we don't get to see a lot of dirt bags in action <laughs> roles. Ah <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man, what a great character and what a great movie. Yeah. So Nathan, this is your pick. That's right. The night comes for us. What a title too, right? Man, the Indonesians and Asia in general have a great way of naming their movies. One hundred percent. I saw the devil. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. <laughs> yeah. The night comes for us yeah oh uh, it's all good it's all great yeah i i love this movie uh, this is a this was your first time watching this right indeed yeah this was a third watch for me mm-hmm. and i was so pleased because i think i was uh you, I, I think i had substances in my body the first two <laughs> times i watched this mm-hmm. and i was really glad that this movie still fucking rips when i'm sober it does i have minor qualms with it here and there that we'll we'll get to as we talk about it mm-hmm. but I feel like this movie, as much as it's become sort of a cult classic in the last five years, Mm -hmm. it's really been slept on. Like, I think this thing got buried because it was originally supposed to uh, be released by the Weinstein Company. Uh. And then when all of that, yeah, all that stuff happened with Harvey Weinstein, they liquidated all of their assets, sold the movie to Netflix. And then this thing just kind of came out in October 2018 and was promptly uh, sort of forgotten, I feel like. I mean, that's the the problem with Netflix. Right. Your movie is out for about three days and then it's just buried under garbage. Truly. Like just the worst type of movies <laughs> out there just <laughs> on top of yours. Yeah. Well, if you're new to the show, uh, I should give you a kind of a brief tour of what the show is about. I guess uh, so. We, me and Nathan, usually watch movies uh, with a third party who is not here today. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to him. I think he was a part of this massive uh, violent attack in the middle of this apartment. Uh-huh. But that was the last I heard from him. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, we usually watch movies like this uh, together. And then, you know, at the end, we come up with a silver lining because contrary to a lot of other uh, film review podcasts, uh, we only watch movies that have fucked up endings or cliffhanger endings or endings that are just not wrapped up in a neat little bow by the time the credits start rolling. Yeah. And uh, this week was your pick. Yeah, this movie not only has that kind of ending, but it also simultaneously makes you go, yeah! Yeah! Like, right? <laughs> like, it's shocking. Like we get a, a needle drop from low and mm-hmm. a smash to credits? Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah, I I, I am a, I'm a big fan of uh, of Indonesian action. I mean, like a lot of a lot of folks, I feel like I was really turned on to the genre uh by the raid Mm -hmm. which shares several actors uh in this movie Mm -hmm. also become a big fan of of timo gianto's work uh after seeing he co-directed safe haven which is i'm glad you brought this up the best vhs segment of all of them without question without question safe haven is the and not that you know rom-com one from (laughs) uh i think it was even maybe the same year not that safe haven it's in vhs Two, yeah, co-written and co-directed by Gareth Evans. That's right, and uh, Timo Gianto, and it fucking rips. It's the coolest fucking short film of all those. It's the short film. Spoiler alert for like a, a twelve-year-old movie, mm-hmm. but like it's the one VHS segment that is like, oh yeah, the world ended yeah. at the end of this one, and somehow there's a tape of it. Like, yes, <laughs> like the, the, the Antichrist was born, yeah. and everything is still okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and, and as you mentioned, may the devil take you. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Mm-hmm. I was also, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Eco Oasis and 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 Joe Taslim and like the this. I, I just love this cast. Great cast. And uh, you know, it was one of those things where when it premiered at Fantastic Fest, the word that was coming out was 
this is the most violent action film ever yeah. made. Yeah. It's, it's going to be NC-17 just because of the fights. Yep. And, you know, the raid two ups the ante from the raid. Mm-hmm. And in uh, Gianto's last film, uh, Headshot had been like crazy violent. And so I was sort of like, well, what what could this be? Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree with some of the criticisms that like the plot is bare bones. But like, I don't know. I think every actor in this movie is so compelling. It's shot really well. Well, and yes, the action is insane. <laughs> Full start to finish. I think some of the best movies, though, are have a bare bones plot. The like, raid is like, let's get to the top of this building. building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mad Max Fury Road is, we got to go somewhere. Oops, now we got to go back. That's the <laughs> plot of Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. And it's one of the best movies ever made. It is. Absolutely. So I think I think if you're going to do a bare bones plot, you better up the visual flair mm-hmm. and everything else. And this movie does in spades because yes this is one of the bloodiest movies i think i've ever seen oh my and God. i'm talking like dead alive <laughs> and evil dead 2013 yeah. levels of blood like yeah. it's ridiculous and the thing about indonesian action movies is these guys take punishment like nobody else's business mm-hmm. like the, i mean literally the showdown in this movie is who can keep stabbing longer <laughs> yeah it's it's a live action anime <laughs> yeah it's funny i wrote down at one point i was like stabbings are only fatal if it doesn't happen to Ito's crew. Right. Like, yes. Everyone else gets stabbed. And and I don't know what's I don't know. I would love to do a tally mark in this movie of what do you think happens more? People getting their arms and legs broken or people getting stabbed? Because <laughs> I think it's probably neck and neck. <laughs> I really I literally wrote down uh during the pool hall, the mess hall fight mm-hmm. towards the end, I was like, this is just arm trauma left yeah. and right. Yeah. And you know what's funny is my my dad really loved the raid. Mm-hmm. And so I was telling him we were doing this for the show and he was like oh is it is it kind of like the raid and i said yeah but it's like a little more extreme and i had forgotten just like the level of craziness that it gets to <laughs> and i pulled up <laughs> that fight scene and he got sick to his stomach like <laughs> he's he's like jesus christ you can see that guy's hair on the net oh, like where he got his head bashed in that, it's that net stuff is so fucking cool yeah. man you know what you mentioned off mic that this may be our shortest episode ever oh, you might yeah. be right because most of my notes are this fucking rip yeah. This is cool as shit. <laughs> yeah. I have, I'm not joking. I maybe have the least amount of notes I've ever taken for a movie. <laughs> I'm including the strangers. In that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some of my notes are literally just like, how does this work? Yep. Holy shit. And then some of it is, oh, I got to keep these character names straight yep, because yeah. there are some characters who just fully aren't named yep. on screen or named like once or twice. Oh, I had to pull up IMDb's cast listing a number of times sure. to make sure I was naming them right. Part of that is due to the fact that this was just sort of envisioned as an epic right yeah. like playing trilogy now by the way yeah it was it's meant to be a trilogy and like they lost funding back in 2014 mm-hmm. and now it's going to be also a graphic novel yep. that like expands on them on the films yeah we've already got a treatment for night of the operator which i cannot wait to see sounds dope co-written by aaron stewart on who co-wrote mandy mm. so like what is that movie give me that <laughs> movie immediately <laughs> it is crazy that the raid was the gateway for so many people yeah. myself included because it is like the one Indonesian action movie that is directed by a white guy. Oh, and it's sure. like, here is your gateway, and now I'm going to go make Godzilla 2014. And it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Gareth Evans meets Iko Weiss while they're making Marantau, which like is also great, but also very much feels like a first feature. Mm-hmm. They've just grown in power since then. Iko Weiss is like one of these guys, anytime I see him attached to something, I'm there. Yeah. I remember finding out he was going to be in The Force Awakens yeah. and thinking, oh my God, that movie's going to be insane. Yeah. And then he just like stands in a hallway. <laughs> yeah. Same with the other guys from the raid. They're yeah. just like, what a waste of those dudes, man. Oh yeah. The Mad Dog's in that too. I, yeah. can't, I can't remember that actor's name, but yeah. 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 Love him. But they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the raid was such a watershed moment for me because mm-hmm. I grew up loving Kung Fu movies. I worshipped at the altar of Jackie Chan and mm-hmm. Jet Li mm-hmm. and and then I just sort of fell away from it. And when the raid came out, it was sort of a moment of, oh, yeah, I love these kinds of movies. Uh-huh. <laughs> it kind of is like a, a lesser version of like when The Matrix came out and everyone got introduced to Kung Everyone's Fu. Everyone's like, oh, my God, Kung anime. Fu. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then like this comes out and you're like, oh, right, that is right. Kung Fu movies are fucking dope. And <laughs> then in the same year, The Raid 2 and John Wick come out. Yep. And I'm like, OK, I'm back in, baby. Like- Can I tell you, though, <laughs> after watching this, I'm uh-huh. like, we got to step it the fuck up with the John Wick movies. Like, <laughs> I am 
I am fucking done with digital blood spurts coming out of people's heads. Oh, I need, yeah. That's the worst thing about those, for sure. I need squibs. I need fucking gallons of blood. <laughs> but I gotta say, I think John Wick Chapter 4 is the closest we've come to A Night Comes for Us yeah. in American cinema. Man, I'm just... Uh, America, where is your blood lost? Why did we lose it? <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> I mean, I want squibs. That sounds like something Scott Atkins' character would ask John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your blood lost, then? I just need it. I need it back. I yeah. need this. This Remember the ending of RoboCop? Hell That's yeah. what I need in my movies still. Like, I'm missing that. I need goofy stop motion. <laughs> I need people's arms to get too big. Yeah, and then I, I, need yeah. <laughs> I need that rear projection falling out of windows. Like, I need that. Yeah. Where is Verhoeven? We get two <laughs> different out of window murders in this movie. And both of them are incredible. I know. You know what my favorite, though, is they love doing this multiple times throughout the movie. Uh-huh. Is Ito or one of the crew will break one of the villain's arms and then the camera whooshes around. Yeah. Them. It's like they do that. That's their go to move. <laughs> There's a couple of clumsy edits in this movie, especially when they're trying to like hide the cuts. Yeah. But I feel I also feel like the Russo brothers saw this movie and were like, can we do like the less good version of this and make extraction? <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen extraction. I've heard it's fine. I've it's heard the fine. second one's better. I have not seen the second one. Okay. I've heard the second one's better, but I just I like Chris Hemsworth, mm-hmm. but also I'm like, I don't know if he can lead a movie, really. <laughs> He's fine in it. The best part of that movie is David Harbour, mm. like unexpectedly just just beaten ass. All right. <laughs> but I should say, I'm also very excited for Furiosa. Totally. Same. Uh, letting him do his natural accent. I'm very excited to see what that's like. That guy looks like he's having so much fun in that trailer. Uh huh. Well, let's dive into uh, some of the information surrounding uh, The Night Comes for Us. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I don't have that much. Um, I can just go ahead and tell you some stuff we've already mentioned, but mm-hmm. just as a refresher, the year is 2018. The director is Timo Jajanto. The film stars Joe Taslam, Iko Uwais, Julie Estelle, Sonny Pang, and Zach Lee. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is a Netflix movie, so finding any information out about uh, the budget and the grossing is pointless. Right. Although, I will say that they did release a lot of data recently for some of their titles. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it was just originals, but... Proving that they could have all along. Yeah, I know. They they can. Mm-hmm. They could definitely do that. Mm-hmm. And the film currently sits at a 91% on yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. Well deserved. Mm -hmm. I don't have a drink of the film, and honestly, it's kind of not really worth playing the trailer because it's not in English. (laughs) So what can we say is like a brief synopsis of what this movie is? Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll let you do it, Nathan, because you've seen it more often than me. You probably have it nailed down a little bit better than I do. Uh, We're introduced to a character named Ido, who is uh, an enforcer for the Asian triads. Basically, Mm -hmm. he is one of the killers that they send in to really send a message uh, whenever they're drug trades or or other dirty businesses are disrupted. And uh, when we join him in the movie, he's finally had enough, enough death. And he refuses to be party to a little girl being killed after this whole village has been massacred. Yeah. So he turns on his compatriots, wipes them all out, and then enlists his old gang buddies basically saying, I want to start over. I got to get this kid out of the city, get us some passports. And his best friend, Aryan, who he hasn't seen in years, is trying to move up in the uh, un- criminal underworld mm-hmm. and promises to take him out yep. in order to uh, take his place among the six C's, which is such a cool name yep. for the enforcers for the triads. Yeah. Also involved in the story is a, a, a mysterious woman just called the operator mm-hmm. who might be a government agent, yeah. might not even be connected to anybody. Yeah. I can't wait to find out what that is about. Yep. But in the story of the film, it's, uh, you know, the classic uh, Spike Spiegel move of I'm going to kill my way out of the mob <laughs> mm-hmm. it's very reminiscent of like logan or totally. like those other lone wolf and cub movies mm-hmm. of like this guy's got to get this girl to point b and they're at point a mm-hmm. so how do they get there that's kind of the basics of the plot and that's why a lot of people do criticize the plot for being bare bones but mm-hmm. again when you surround it with great characters great right. performances amazing action who gives a shit like i don't care i think to your point like the story itself is the archetype right, right? like yeah. this is like a type of story that we're familiar with and then we hang all of the world building on it. Yeah, no, it's all cliches. It's all stuff you've seen before, but just remixed. Like <laughs> sure. that's, it's, you know, nothing is surprising in 
this movie other than the levels that it goes to. That's really <laughs> it. Right. And in like you said, like the 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 really great interpersonal stuff, mm-hmm. like the 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 relationships between the characters I think are really interesting. I wish I'll just throw this out there right now. I wish Reina, the little girl, had a little bit more to do in the plot. Yeah. She says I think a total of four lines in the film. And I I kind of wanted Win Sue to do a little more too. I agree. Yeah, yeah totally. I don't know. There's there's a there's a great story here about brotherhood and betrayal as well. Yeah. And that I that I think is really fascinating. Is it Winsu or Wiznu? I need to look this Wiznu. up. Wiznu. Wiznu, okay. Yeah. And then uh the ex girlfriend uh who just disappears from the movie. I mean Shinta. Shinta. She I mean rightfully so she disappears, but Oh right, yeah. She she gets the hell out of there, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's crazy how many characters there are in this movie, and mm-hmm. then when they get introduced, they're instantly like noticeable and likable, right. like they stand out. Like Fatih steps in oh, and like within 10 seconds i'm like i'm i'm in i'm in on this guy love that guy yeah i I mean i feel the same way about alma and elena Mm -hmm. like each of them are given a very like noticeable weapon Mm -hmm. that just sort of tells you so much about their personality their performances are interesting yeah i mean elena (laughs) in one of my favorite moments of the movie this character who has like three lines of dialogue before she kills somebody she makes it a point to turn a cross in the room upside down yeah yeah (laughs) it's metal as hell it's silly i love it but it's like, so that's, extra <laughs> that's the movie in a microcosm right yeah. like it goes those extra little miles <laughs> yeah no absolutely yeah ito is like you said he's he's on his way out he does he it's finally reached a breaking point as this uh one of the six enforcers of the triad mm-hmm. and his friend arian is agreed to take him out to then fill that position so that's his motivation mm-hmm. and he kind of disappears throughout a lot of the movie because there's just so much fucking fighting right. but uh we start off, man, and it's just this little girl waking up on the beach, uh, and she's, yeah. like, beaten and battered, and then she turns and looks, and there's just a group of men with guns mowing down her parents, yeah. presumably, and then we kind of just leave it there, and with this Gregorian chant. Oh, my God. The the, the guttural score? Uh-huh. Yeah. They do the same Gregorian chant at, like, the beginning of Mortal Kombat. Like, I just, <laughs> that's all I thought about. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, Ito has an uphill battle against the audience after this scene, right? Like, yeah. Like, the movie opens with him almost shooting a child yes and so it's it's up to the rest of the film to sort of get us on his side Mm -hmm. and joe taslim i think does a really great job of of balancing those like moments of self-hatred yeah he plays a really good uh mixture of Mm self-hating but also like playing a badass like just a cliched 80s 90s badass like that that's the role and the movie kind of makes no bones about the fact that he's not a hero yeah he just decided to do a good thing for one yeah, for one time, that doesn't make you a good person, necessarily. Right. And uh, I got to ask, what what's up with you picking uh, Asian films this season where someone wakes up naked on the floor with a bandage over where their kidney would be? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing. I also was just sort of amazed that, like, they just left him in the bathroom floor for, like, however long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he takes a shot to the gut. And I, I love the first place he goes is to his ex-girlfriend's house, who he hasn't seen in three years. Yeah. And I love how she sort of plays this in a daze. Like, if you woke up to blood all over the floor in the bathroom, you would think you're dreaming, right? Like, even though she's lived around this sort of dangerous life. No, absolutely. And uh, I I just love that she's bandaged him up a little bit, Uh and when he wakes up, she goes, oh, there's painkillers on the counter. Uh It kind of plays into the whole rest of the movie where, like, people are getting stabbed left and right Uh and shot, and they just walk it off. And (laughs) Doesn't that feel like a Resident Evil thing where it's like... Well, it's it's perfectly a video game, but specifically, I, I don't know if you'll get this right, reference but i i play this very specific survival first person shooter game Uh called escape from tarkov oh yeah sure and in the game it's it's so ridiculous because like you can break both your legs (laughs) and then pop an ibuprofen and then you can sprint on them and it's so (laughs) fucking funny that i'm like that's this movie it's ethan winters (laughs) yeah putting his arm back on and pouring some juice on it yeah yeah (laughs) sprinkling some water on it he's good to go uh and he never he never really questions it that's the best part about that reveal at eight it's like well yeah of course. <laughs> i totally agree we talked about this a little bit on our resident <laughs> evil episode but uh-huh. it is always just sort of like oh yeah you're right my arms shouldn't be able to do that huh oh right i forgot i'm not a lizard <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we get introduced to Fatih yeah. and white boy Bobby, who I love. Oh, unbelievable character. Fatih's cousin, uh, Wisnu? Wisnu. Wisnu. Who thinks that Ito rules. Yes. Like, he's just <laughs> like, I wor- I think you're so cool. Yeah, and then he shows a picture of his old crew, and there's one missing, and that's the Aryan guy. Mm-hmm. But man, the Photoshop work on this group photo is so bad. Oh, it's, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's really funny. It, like, it looks like when you go to like like a tourist spot and mm-hmm. they photoshop you onto like austin powers uh-huh. head or something like. uh-huh. we cut to him in uh in the club yeah it's it's odd why they bring him up i guess because it's he's the only other member of the crew that's still alive yeah. but they want to make sure he's not going to come for them and it's interesting that our first real fight scene of the movie is Aryan having sort of a a hero moment i know so he's he's uh, catering to these triad members mm-hmm. and they're holding this waitress hostage because she spilled some of the wine on one of these guys' pants. Yeah. And he keeps, you know, yelling at uh, at Arian that he's uh, a dirty foreigner. Right. Man, he shoves a wine glass that this guy's drinking into his face. <laughs> yeah. And then beats up all these, all these croonies that he's got yeah. and then takes a beer bottle, jams it into this guy's thigh, like a broken beer bottle. Yeah. And then puts the bottle in the dude's mouth. Yeah. And the best part about it is, as the guy is, like, in shock that this beer bottle is jammed into his mouth, you can hear the breathing coming through the drinking hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the sound design here is insane. Incredible. We also get that he's, like, not totally without his, like, shitty moments, right? Yeah. Like, he, whenever this guy is holding this girl hostage, he shoves her head into the guy's face yeah. to sort of headbutt him through her. Yeah. Yeah. Then knocks him into a stripper pole so hard that the thing that, like is vibrating. And he has to grab it and hold it. It's great. I mean, it's a great first fight scene. Everyone is so blase about stuff like that though at this movie, which I appreciate. Arian also <laughs> just seems to be the kind of guy who wants to get things done as quickly as possible. So yep. it doesn't even really like you get from the beginning that he's not super concerned with collateral damage. He would have let these guys get away with being beating up his staff if they hadn't insulted him. Yep. It was all because of his ego and his pride being hurt. Yeah. This is where we're introduced to Chien Wu, mm-hmm. like one of my favorite performances in the movie. He's I think this great. guy rules. He's great. I love that he's like, oh, let's go have a talk and then just pull off onto the side of an off ramp and they're just like, we'll have the conversation <laughs> right here. Right here. <laughs> but yeah, it's so that Wu can be like, hey, so uh, you remember how you grew up here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he even says to basically to the camera, he's like, this is kind of like a gangster movie, isn't it? Oh my gosh. What do you think yeah i i do love this bit where he calls arian and he says it's about ito Mm -hmm. and when he hears ito's name iko wayas like has this little like flinch like he's just already bracing himself for the worst news yep Yep. And he basically tells him, hey, look, Ito's a uh, turncoat. We need you to take him out. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if you do, maybe uh, his spot's vacant. You know, who, who knows what could happen? One day, everything the light touches in this shithole will be yours, <laughs> essentially. Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. Um, I also love this flashback of uh, what I assume is uh, Ito and Arian getting, like, inducted into the triads. Mm-hmm. And I really think we should do this once a year for the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Just light some candles, get oh, our shirts man, off, yeah. have a little have a friendly battle (laughs) yeah absolutely i like that and then he gets on this plane on this jet to go back home and then i don't know if you saw there's the comfiest looking pillow in the seat next to him this red and white pillow it was almost my prop cop and i was like i found something better later on (laughs) i have a feeling you and i might have picked the same prop because it's the most insane thing i've ever seen okay i would be shocked if you picked it in fact i remember now i was going to pull the screenshot of it for you okay because you may not even have seen it i I, I took a picture of the television because i was like how can i describe this okay all right maybe (laughs) you know what maybe we did pick the same thing so in the meantime in the meantime i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it up okay uh, so i have a copy of it but uh yeah no he goes back and then ito is told by white boy bobby that like hey all the money you had was you know in storage by this guy who's the butcher johan took all our money Mm -hmm. all our drugs started his own business Mm -hmm. and we get to see homeboy snort a line and roll one of his eyes one eye (laughs) one of his eyes rolls back in his head it's such a (laughs) weird detail and i love it so much it's a great detail and johan's a crazy motherfucker johan it gets it maybe the worst out of everybody in this movie i don't mm-hmm. know so he goes to this butcher shop and johan has started yeah running a drug kingpin mm-hmm. out of the back of the butcher shop with his crew yeah 
And Ito goes in, he's like, I'm here for my money, and he has to fight all these guys. Well, Johan is the kind of guy who doesn't put on a, uh, he'll put on a tart, but he won't put on a mask mm-hmm. whenever he's, like, cutting up meat, so he gets blood all over his face. Yep. And we get that really great bit where he walks back in and puts on his glasses while he's talking to Ito, and that's when he recognizes him. Yep. He, he, he has a post-it note that just says, like, Ito's back, yep. like, to remind him that he's in trouble. Yep. It's so funny to me. No, it's it's great. And this fight scene, oh, man. man, this is like the first real big one. Yeah. There's a guy. Okay, so... <laughs> the dude who gets the Glasgow smile. Oh, so that dude gets the Glasgow smile, and then a fucking giant piece of meat falls and crushes <laughs> his crushes head. Crushes his head. I was like, God damn. And then there's a guy that gets on put on the meat hook, gets the Texas chainsaw treatment. Uh-huh. Another dude gets stabbed with a hoof. Gets stabbed with a hoof in the chest. And then, oh my God, like Johan gets shot in the foot. That wide shot of the room full of dead butchers <laughs> is nuts. <laughs> it's great. But no, Johan gets stabbed in the foot. He runs back to his office, grabs a shotgun. Ito then like takes the gun from him. And it's, he gets like his hands crushed while he's trying to fish his money out for him. Shoots him in the leg, drags yeah. him under under the desk with a shotgun <laughs> yeah. oh. and you're right like johan like is still able to have a full conversation I know. while like because the, the bit where he's trying to get the money out of the freezer is after half of his leg has been blown off uh-huh. it's nuts i would be going ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh. These men, they're hard men. I, I, I feel like maybe it's because of all the drugs, yeah. but I, I can't say for sure. We're dipping into crank territory if that's the case. I'd buy <laughs> that. Right. I'd 100% buy that. So he gets his money, and then it turns out that Johan had called in the triad to let him know Ito's here. Right. And uh, he kind of fights his way out of here, right? He gets his money and dips. He tries to. I don't remember what the money was for specifically to help get him out of the country, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, that and also to just get it back to his guys because they're, they're putting their necks on the line by getting him the passport True, and the cash. Right, and right. So Bobby gets wind that this is all going down. And so he's going to take Shinta to quote unquote get food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a shot of them leaving the apartment and this kid just sort of sidles up casually behind them. Mm-hmm. And it's terrifying. Like, Bobby, in one of my favorite moments in the movie, fakes a breakup with Shinta to just oh, get her out it. of the elevator. Yeah. Ah, it's great. Bobby is so good. He's he's an ex-junkie that's lost his foot, so he's limping everywhere he's going. Oh, yeah. He is crazy. He is like, like he goes from zero to 100 real quick. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, he leaves the apartment and this guy kind of like walks in behind him. Bobby notices and the guy just kind of walks away. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, they noticed me. Let me just play it cool. And we pass by this wet floor sign yeah. as they're walking out. He gets on the elevator, they go down, and as they're going to get off the elevator, these bunch of triad guys get on to go up to the apartment. Right. And so to get Shinta out of there, he fakes having a breakup with her and pushes her off the elevator. And that little smile he gives her as the door closes is so uh, great. And then he just pulls out a, a switchblade and he just goes to town on these guys. <laughs> he walks back into the apartment, his laugh and his like swagger. Mm-hmm. He's just like, I'm going to fucking kill all of you. <laughs> like, it's like, so good. The camera's behind him following up out of this elevator. You yeah. can see a bunch of guys going into the apartment to kill Fatih and everyone else. And he's just following them. He's just walking casually behind them. And then, man, this this is where it like really starts going to go into play. Because before we've had the butcher fight and everything, oh, and it's, man. it's bloody as hell. But man, this scene, he walks in, he kind of, the fight kind of stops dead mm-hmm. and he just starts screaming at him you want to kill me so fucking bad fucking shoot me and this guy just unloads an uzi on him yeah and lucky for him <sighs> that a the guy didn't hit him in the face at all right. but b that this wet floor sign was Is bulletproof, bulletproof. <laughs> Because he uses it as a bulletproof vest under his jacket. They have built things in Jakarta, apparently, out of fucking titanium. Because <laughs> uh-huh. just like a scene before this, Ito dives behind Johan's desk. Mm-hmm. And a whole SWAT team unloads into the desk and he's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's a SWAT team, quote unquote. Yeah. And they they chew Johan up with the and then then take him into then they take Ito into custody. Yeah. Yeah. Johan gets got right there. He just gets unloaded on with a bunch of assault rifles. <laughs> nuts. And then they put him in the back of a of a SWAT van and, you know, try and take him back to the triad. He manages to escape there with a grenade oh and, God. like, using his handcuffs to, like, choke somebody. Like, it's it's brutal. The chunks go flying yep. when that one cop explodes. Yeah. And I had to... So, during the p- apartment fight, I had to keep turning the movie down <laughs> because I thought my next door neighbors were going to think that, like, there was a murder happening mm-hmm. here. Like, there's mm-hmm. so much screaming. People are, like, gurgling yeah. and spitting blood up and 
this fight is insane. Like, there's so many dudes trying to get through the door while Bobby's holding it. We have this little zoom out while people are just stabbing him in the arm. Yeah, it's, it's great, too, because uh, Wisnu tries to break one of these guys' arms mm-hmm. in the middle of this fight, and he can't. Oh, and yeah. I thought that was the funniest fucking thing, because there's so many. Because everyone else has done it. Everyone else is breaking limbs left or right. Like, it's no problem, and he can't do it. And in the middle of this, we get that shot of Arian out in the car feeling like shit, yeah. like hitting the steering wheel because, you know, he sold his friends out and man once this movie starts it does not stop like the action just keeps going and it's so great because like you'll be in the middle of a fight and you'll cut away and get introduced to characters that you've never seen before but the movie plays it like you have because we get introduced to elma and elena and all these other people Mm -hmm. and it's just like yeah these are also people a part of the fight and you're like oh okay and you just go with it (laughs) yeah and at this point like we think Bobby and Wisnu and and Fadi have killed all the other guys. Yeah. And then we cut yeah, we cut to Elena and Alma and the reveal that they have like 15 other dudes with them it's, yeah it made me laugh out loud i was like what it, what can we can we give these folks a break please yeah no there is there's no breaks there's no rest at all in this movie but yeah everyone's got machetes and everyone is just losing limbs and there's blood everywhere this apartment is destroyed oh my god there, there, there's a bit <laughs> there's a bit in the fight where they're just grabbing stuff off the coffee table yeah. and chucking them at people yeah it's so good <laughs> it's nuts dude and i i gotta tell you i'm already halfway through my notes because <laughs> i was like i'm just engrossed by the the movie well sure because now we get elena's old boy fight oh we do yeah yeah absolutely so with, this is the, with this uh with this kukri yeah, yeah kukri she she kills off three of these guys that come at her and then white boy bobby decides i'm gonna step in and be a distraction to let fatih and reina get away and he goes out like a champ man this is the only part of the movie that's a bummer to me because yeah. i i wanted just him i wanted bobby just put up a little bit more of a fight i know against elena like just not much more i just you know but he, he goes out just as quickly as the other guys do yeah i mean he he was going in for a headbutt and he gets stabbed in the face yeah. like it it's it's tough but it's it's pretty bad he gets stabbed in the stomach too and mm-hmm. then he pushes the knife forward more into him mm-hmm. to get to her it's brutal dude mm-hmm. like there's this whole apartment is covered this hallway is covered in blood and all i keep thinking about is this poor little girl mm-hmm. <laughs> has watched 70 people die in the last 24 hours <laughs> she's already given them all like uncle like she's already attributed them all that's uncle white Bobby. oh my gosh bobby. yes yeah <laughs> uncle uncle bobby and uncle yeah <laughs> uncle fatigue yeah auntie shinta mm-hmm. yeah and then uh, they run into uh, Alma in the hallway, and Alma is great because she's got this retractable garret, oh, like yeah. this razor sharp wire. Yeah, and she, she just rips up fucking Wisnu's hand. It's Ugh, like yeah. um, the guy that puts his arm in the door in Green Room that oh. gets the machete to it. Yeah. Oof. yeah. In fact, I got a lot of Green Room vibes from this movie, too, actually. I can see it, totally. Yeah, and Fatih has, like, this breakdown when he sees Wisnu die. Yeah. And Alma looks almost, like, comically curious about this. Like, she doesn't understand his feelings yeah. and Arian comes in and kicks her through a door like he's like <laughs> he all right, treats enough. her like such a rag doll he wraps his coat around her face so she can't see and then kicks her into a door yeah and that takes her out for a bit and he tries to play the hero but yeah. Fatih is just like look Johan doesn't know where I live you yeah. do I know you sold me out I know it was you afraid this- of <laughs> <laughs> right I, I know uh, tell Cersei it was me <laughs> this is one of the parts that doesn't quite work for me this fake out of it looking like he kills Arian which I think is only really supposed to trick the audience yeah. And like, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. And he fires a warning shot at him and tells him, you know, y- you cause all this mess. Leave us alone. We're getting out of here. Go on, get. And uh, I got a non sequitur here, but watch me weave it back into things. Okay. I'm a magician right here. Ready? Mm hmm. <clears throat> Fuck Tim Pool. Oh. And if you're not familiar with who he is, he's a Twitter uh, white incel looking dude <laughs> who uh, has basically come out and said uh, the new Grand Theft Auto is going to be stupid. It's woke because, quote, a woman is incapable of physically hurting a man, oh. which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Jesus Christ. I brought it back because this is during that fight with Alma. Right. She puts up a bit of a fight, too, uh-huh. and especially with Wisnu and Elena earlier fighting in the hallway. So, like, that's all. It just made me think about that. That, that stupid quote. I, I mean, I, I've been on the fuck Tim Pool train for a minute now, mm-hmm. so I, uh, you know, but I'm glad it's finally made its way to the show in an organic way. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Grok is unfortunately woke by now. Oh, no, because it it knows facts. <laughs> this woke bullshit. God, I, uh, I can't, I can't, I got no, I got no jokes about it. It's just so You like du- how I got that in? I do, I, and I appreciate you. I also appreciate Fatih because this dude doesn't 
stop. Mm -mm. Like, he he seems to have taken a thousand bullets at this point. From AKs and shit, yeah. (laughs) And I kept thinking, look, I love Ito. I think he's a great character. Mm -hmm. But in this scene, I kept thinking, why isn't this the movie? Like, a a reverse raid where he's just trying to get this girl out out of of an apartment. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm here for that. And I kind of just want that side movie of, like, what he was up to. Yeah. No, it's great because, like, he takes a bajillion bullets through this windshield while he's trying to drive out of this parking garage. Raina stabs a dude in the throat. (laughs) Yeah, she does. She takes a knife and stabs a guy in the throat that tries to break through the back windshield. But then, like, he gets riddled with bullets and, like, there's just dead silence. And then all of a sudden you hear... <laughs> and I'm like, get the fuck out of here! Yeah, get the fuck. <laughs> and she's she's like, Uncle Fatih, are you okay? Uh-huh. And I'm like, girl, he's got like 900 holes in him. He's an Afghan blanket. You can see all through him. <laughs> he looks like the spot from Spider Verse. <laughs> And man, this red dot laser comes through the haze. Those are great. The the shots of like the motorcycle being haloed mm. by the gun, the the muzzle flare mm-hmm. is so good. And uh, introduces us to the operator. Yeah, who is this uh, badass woman who comes in and you know takes Reina from Fatih mm-hmm. and goes to uh, Ito's hideout, right? Because yeah. Ito escapes and uh, he steals a car, drives to this hideout. And I gotta say, I love I, the operator is played by Julia Stell, mm-hmm. who was also in. Headshot, but she in the raid two, she played a character just called Hammer Girl. Mm. Who, like, if you've seen that movie, you remember Hammer Girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I gotta rewatch the raid and raid two. It's been a minute. They're both so good. Yeah. So she's there in Ito's place. Yeah. They have a bit of a fight. She's got this silenced machine gun, mm-hmm. this l- like maybe like a SMG. And I, I think it's funny because she gets the one up on him. Yeah. And then she puts this. <laughs> She puts the gun barrel to his head, like the silencer. I'm like, he would have a burn hole in the middle of his forehead oh, from yeah. this thing. <laughs> I gotta say, before right before we get there, there's the bit where Ito sees that Fatih has died. Yeah. And I was just so shocked by the shot of someone just putting a newspaper over his corpse. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we get that silent scene of Ito telling Shinta, like, uh, everyone's dead, yep. get out of town. Yep. And that's the last time we see her. She throws her phone away and hops on the subway. Smart girl. Yeah. Smart girl. But yeah, the operator appears in his place like Michael Myers. Like, literally <laughs> really comes out does. Of the shadow. Really does. There's malignant lighting. It's, uh-huh. it's great. And then, uh, you know, he's like, she's going to put a gun to his hand and kill him. Mm-hmm. And then Raina steps down and says, don't kill Uncle Ito. Uh. And uh, she's like, okay, well, you have to explain yourself. What's going on? And he explains, I went to this village with some members of the triad, mm-hmm. these, these henchmen, because some people in the village had stolen drugs from us. And I was instructed to wipe out everyone in the village because of those few. To send a message. Yeah. 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 And he essentially gives her like the, you know, when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, all I do is kill people. And then eventually I was like, hang on, why do I do this? Yeah. He's, he's, he has a moment of uh, self-awareness when he sees Raina there. Mm-hmm. And then he takes out all the guys there after getting shot once in the, in the side. Mm-hmm. And that's where we, you know, loop back to the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And he says, look, I got to get her out of here. And then when I'm done, you can have me. I'll, you know, I'll make it easy for you. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And she, I don't believe, is hinted to be a member of the Six Seas, right? She's an independent. Yeah, she she just says the people who hired me to kill you and the Six Seas. Mm-hmm. However this turns out, she's fine with it as long as they're all dead. Yeah. And then we kind of get set up for the final act of the movie yeah. because uh, Aryan gets back to uh, Chien Wu and, you know, they're like, why didn't you kill Ito when you had the chance? Why did you attack Alma? Mm-hmm. Why, you know, why'd you let them get away? And uh, he, he basically tells them, like, you got one more shot. Yeah. You got one more chance to kill him. And if not, you know it's coming for you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we we go to uh, the docks. Oh, we, we also get that great flashback yep. sequence where Aryan and Ito, like, make their pact to join the triads. And yes. I love the shot of Aryan watching the flashback, right? Yeah. Like, it pulls back from them walking out of the mess hall and Aryan's standing there and he just looks kind of broken. Yeah. I love those little moments where it takes a second to breathe because, like you said, this movie is just non-stop. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because where the final act of the movie takes place is where Ito and his crew would meet mm-hmm. to set up their deals and stuff. And uh, it's revealed in a flashback that uh, White Boy Bobby had uh, basically started doing some deals on the side with the triad mm-hmm. and so they kind of screwed them over. 
yeah. kind of splintered the group. And they all kind of knew each other at yeah. that point, right? Like, yeah. they, I mean, they knew each other like at their core because Bobby has that really cutting line to Ito where he says, at least I don't get high on murder. Yeah. And like that sets him off. Like yeah. it is, it's true. There's something about like he wouldn't have gotten into this life if he didn't enjoy it at least a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is where the final showdown is going to take place. Oh, yeah. And man, I've only got like five notes left because <laughs> I was just like, it was insane. Yeah. One of the notes is, so he goes to this this hideout and, you know, it's been overrun by these triad henchmen guys. Mm-hmm. He's like, this ends tonight. We got it. That's, you know, the night comes for us. One of the guys asks him, like, do you have a death wish? And he just smiles. Mm-hmm. It's so good. And he says, come at me. Yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah he he murders them with pool balls Dude, he- <laughs> okay okay we got we got to go step by step through this so okay. my first note i'm just amazed yeah when i watch movies like this at the choreography and the filmmaking because it's 1v40 maybe yes <laughs> like yeah you got to think because they're doing crazy shit he's there's blood everywhere mm-hmm. he's you know taking pool balls smashing into dudes faces he's breaking pole sticks in half and stabbing them he's ripping the light fixture down and beating him with it and yeah. i'm like they gotta reset this set yes every take they do of this yeah oh it's gotta be exhausting and they have to keep track of the continuity of all the blood yeah. spatter and like it is such an incredible undertaking and to their credit i mean there are a couple of moments where we get the classic like okay we're gonna attack him one at a time yeah but they really think about ways that he can take on all of them at once mm-hmm. there's that really great moment where he picks up a guy over his head oh, man. and just spins him around as a shield while while they're all slashing at him. One of my potential bed parts is that guy. Because well, that's so fucking good. <laughs> he, he grabs a hook from one dude and oh. tears a dude's balls off. He stabs him in like right below the belly button. Yeah. Rips it down to his groin. And then rips it away. And Ugh. rips the dude's sack off. Yeah. And that's not even like some of the worst of it. Like, no. Maybe the first time I've ever seen this yeah. in a movie is the pool table thing you talked about. Where the, the rope net that's underneath where in the pockets. He rips it off yes. with like three balls inside. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And then just beats a guy to death with it until blood is spraying out of him like fucking Battle Royale. Yes. Yeah. And then there's just clumps of hair in the sack as he goes to attack him. That shot is insane. Yeah. And the best part of all of this is at one point, somebody comes out with a gun. Uh-huh. And it's a shotgun. He ends up getting it. And a guy gets blown into a sign that says safety is everyone's responsibility. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's a good bit. While the reverse cut of that is Ito standing in front of a sign that says safety starts with me. <laughs> oh, I missed that. That's great. <laughs> oh, it was a great one two punch. Oh, that's so good. It's great. Well, and we're also cross cutting to the operator killing the shit out of a bunch of dudes because she's She's got all the Simtex and right, like explosives. Right. She's trying to leave Ito's apartment, but all, all the, the henchmen are going that way. And so, yeah, there's just limbs and blood and bodies everywhere. And I kept thinking about the fact that she's like she's like strapping bombs to the hallway. Yep. And I'm like, Ito's not the only person who I know. lives in that building. I know. But they, th- that's the one thing about this movie. They never show you any of the other occupants no. in any of these buildings no. at all. At least in the raid, every once in a while, you'd see like a squatter who's just like, I am not involved in this. Yeah. Like, (laughs) And so Alma and uh, Elena show up to Ito's place and that's where the operator is. So we have this 1v2 girl fight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Elena flips one of Ito's crosses on the wall upside down before the fight starts. And a fantastically unnecessary moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This fight is so good. We should mention too that uh, those two are lovers, Elena and Alma. Yeah. And so they get into this fight and man, it's it's a pretty good fight. But the best part is Alma pulls out that uh, retractable Garrett that she's got. Yeah. And then... (laughs) The operator wraps it around an AC unit, (laughs) kicks the unit out the window. Kicks it out the window. And it just simultaneously it hangs Alma, but also cuts her neck off. Like it just in her her fingers. Yeah, her hand (laughs) drops to the side, and we see that she lost like four fingers trying to pull this thing off of her. Yeah. And that's not the end of the finger trauma here. Oh my god, that that's one of my last notes is this fucking finger thing. (laughs) So it's crazy because like she turns to Elena who is on the floor and she sees Alma's dead body and doesn't really react much yeah and the operator goes why didn't you try and save her and she goes well you can't save what's already dead right like cold-blooded man yeah 
And so their fight spills out into the hallway. I think at one point the operator uses one of the dead dude's limbs that she blew up earlier to yep. protect herself. They're just slicing at each other. And there's this amazing shot where the operator holds up her hand. One of her fingers is gone. The other one is hanging on by a nub and she just pulls it off yeah. to like get rid of it. Bone and all. And she seems annoyed. Anno- yeah. Like this is so <laughs> inconvenient for me. Yeah. And I, I love this moment of Elena just kind of like smiling like she's about to attack. And then she just realizes her guts are hanging. Yeah. Out. Then she's just like, "Oh, I've been disemboweled. Oops. Oh, hold on, my <laughs> intestines." It's it's funny because like she's smiling at the fact that she cut this girl's finger off, and then she's like, "Ow." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like moments of this movie feel so like harrowing and realistic, and then we have stuff like this that is straight up fist of the North Star. Uh-huh. Like this is so <laughs> absurd that you can't help but kind of laugh at it. Yeah. But in like an inner, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't. It never takes me out of the movie. I yeah. don't know why. I, I feel like it all occupies its own weird space Well, because it keeps going like yeah, this movie doesn't right. stop and man i only have two notes left and one of them is we didn't talk about it yet but the soundtrack of this movie uh, is rips. fucking great yeah it is pumping the whole time mm-hmm. with fucking cyberpunk like synth wave and yeah. techno it's it's awesome it gives every fucking fight scene like its own rhythm to it yeah so we get this final showdown then because Aryan shows up to the warehouse yep and he, remember he's got to kill Ito in order to get a, a part of the six C's mm-hmm. and they they both agree we're like alright we're gonna have our final fucking battle it's like in a video game where you fight the boss and then he has a second form and right. you're like you don't get your health back yeah like you're just like oh I gotta fight okay that's not fair but whatever yeah his <laughs> yeah yeah Aryan's health bar replenishes like three times yes. during this and and Ito's never goes up once. Luckily, Ito <laughs> exploits his one weakness, which is his sick fashion sense. I know. He, he beats the shit out of this guy with his own tie. Dude, okay, so this final fight, it can't be understated. Like, it's it builds to this. Yes. Like, it earns this final fight. It takes its time. They do so much damage to one another. There's like, a move here that I don't think I've ever seen before, oh, which yeah? is Ito, I wrote down piggyback toss. Oh, Ito yeah. <laughs> jumps onto Aryan's back and then grabs him from underneath yep. and chucks it like uses the momentum to chuck him into some boxes <laughs> uh-huh. it's wild it's crazy man they they do so much damage there's machetes involved and screwdrivers impaling one another they're hitting each other so hard that they start dry heaving yeah. during the fight yeah. like there's a shot where 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 arian's just laying on the ground like trying not to throw up and there's parts where like ito goes to punch arian in the face and he moves and he hits a steel beam oh yeah. And then Arian does the same thing with his foot. He tries to kick him, Ito, in the head and misses and hits the beam. And like a table saw gets involved yeah. that just barely misses Arian and like trims his hair up a bit. The only misstep here, I think, is I could have done without the CGI tooth flying yeah. out of Ito's mouth. But yeah. other than like, that's such a small qualm. Again, why is there weird connections between the movies this season? Because now I'm thinking about The Flash. Like, why, <laughs> are, you, why are we doing that this season? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, the, the fight ends in a truly great gruesome way and it's just like i'm watching the movie like pulling up my hair like what the fuck oh yeah the box cutter so there's a box cutter that arian gets and they, he starts attacking ito with and ito gets like this wooden shard yeah. that he picks up out of a pile and they both it culminates with them both attacking each other in the face yeah. where the box cutter is through ito's mouth Brr. poking out the side of his cheek and he's like he's stopped it from going any further with his teeth with his like teeth? he's literally bit down on the hand <laughs> that and then arian is being stabbed in the neck with yeah. the wooden stake <sighs> and it's like they're holding each other in place just bleeding out and it's just like it's one of the most brutal things i've ever seen in the movie. it's insane and i love that this episode is like the chris farley show sketch from snl where we're just like did you remember when this fucking happened that, like, was, that was nuts cool, right? like, that was awesome <laughs> That's truly like you got it. Seeing is believing. Yeah. Like you will be a convert if you're like, this sounds fucking cool as shit. Go watch it. Go watch it. It's on Netflix. Go enjoy yourself. Get some friends together. Have some beers. Watch this. If it's available on physical media, please get it before Netflix inevitably just decides it doesn't want to have it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. 
And Ito tells Arya, and he won't finish him off because I can't kill what's already dead. Good callback. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Ito walks out. Well, uh, so Ito tries to walk away. Arya grabs this gun and yells at him, like, just die. Yeah. Die already. And Ito looks back at him with a look on his face like, yeah, I'm working on it. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> But also with a look of, have you not seen the rest of the movie? I can't die. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, it would not surprise me one bit if the very end of the movie, they were like revealed that he was a mortal. Like, He's I would, a Highlander. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, get Timo Jajantu to make a fucking Highlander movie, please. Who's, uh, someone is doing it, right? Isn't Chad Stahelski making a Highlander movie? Well, not Timo Jajantu. I, I want know, this guy. I know. Involved. No, absolutely. But yeah, Chien Wu shows up with his gang and they're like, Iron, you felt us for the last time. Yeah. And uh yeah, he gets got gets mowed down so they they all pull their guns on arian and arian gets that last little great bit of like straightening his suit jacket yep. pulling up his collar and then they take him out yep it's great yep he gets put down man like a dog <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, this is the end of uh, The Night Comes for us. Nathan, you uh-huh. want to wrap up what happens here? Yeah. So, um, Ido manages to make it to the docks where the operator has brought Reina. Reina is like crying and holding him and trying to give him their passports to get them out of the country. Mm-hmm. And he basically sends her on her way by herself. Yeah. Because he knows that she's not going to be safe with him and he's not going to live for another, you know, 30 minutes probably. Mm-hmm. So, she leaves to safety. She and Wu and his guys show up as Ito's getting back into his car and they all pull their guns out on him. And so uh, he smiles, Mm -hmm. (laughs) cranks up the car, drives at them at full speed while they're firing at him. And the movie smashes to black (laughs) as he's screaming at them. Well, I got to correct you. It does not smash cut to black. It smash cuts to directed by. Oh, yeah, that's true. (laughs) Yes. There is no hesitancy. It's just like, bam, we're out of here. And well, I we remember- get that exquisite <laughs> uh, needle drop of murder uh-huh. by Low. It's so good. And Ito just screaming like a fucking banshee. Like, yeah. it is, it's a ballsy rock and roll fucking ending. I remember the credits popping up and being like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an insane ending. It's full fucking throttle, man. It's great. It's nuts. But yeah, that's the night comes for us, too. What a crazy way to end this movie. I hope if there is another movie, I know they're talking about the next one being a spinoff about the operator. Mm-hmm. I really want, I don't care, go full crank two with it. Ido survives somehow. I don't oh, care. Sure. I want to see more of Ido going on. He's more car than man now. Yeah. <laughs> fuck it. Make him immortal. I don't care. I want to see more of this guy doing yeah. more shit in this universe. Fuck it. But the next movie is in hell. Yeah. And he's going to fight all of them again. Speaking <laughs> of that, please tell me you have seen the plot synopsis for the new Passion of the Christ sequel. I so is it is that true? It really takes place partially in hell. I Jesus like fighting so. his way through hell. I don't even care if I'm being fed misinformation. I want that. Give me that. That sounds like Nick Cave's The Passion of the Christ. <laughs> I want the end of the house that Jack built, but with Jesus. Like I want, <laughs> I want Jesus with a sword. That's what I want. Uh, speaking of hell, did you notice the operator's bike had a six 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 license plate? I did not, but that makes sense. I'm here for. It. so dope what if that's who hired her the fucking the devil, devil. <laughs> like i gotta come after him i need you to send me all of my soldiers now I'm, I'm here for it yeah 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 i'm fucking here for it i'm here for it uh but yeah that's that's the the tale of ito when the night comes for us Hell so yeah. nathan yes any final thoughts about the movie any final no any notes we missed or? Uh, there's a there's a really lovely scene uh I, I forgot to mention after the fight at the apartment complex where ito and reina just sit on the floor right. and he asks her to describe his friends to her right and it's just a really like it's another one of those things where it's like this movie still works so well when it takes a second to breathe and let the characters interact with each other Absolutely. and I just I think that's a really lovely moment yeah no I, I totally agree that was it's it is nice when they have those quieter moments in this movie because they do work yeah and then it's right back to the fucking violence of bloodshed <laughs> right no I, I totally agree with that and uh with that why don't we jump over to a segment we like to call prop cop <laughs> And uh, if you're a new listener to the show, a prop cop is where Nathan and I are going to look at all of the different props in the movie The Night Comes for Us, Mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to take one of those bad boys for ourselves. Uh So, uh, Nathan, you get first pick because this is your movie. What prop do you want from The Night Comes for Us? I'm sending it to you right now, but in the butcher shop scene. Oh, no. Maybe we did pick one. No. There's a little (laughs) figurine of a cow throwing it back. (laughs) The slutty little cow. It's the most insane thing I've ever (laughs) seen. 
<laughs> he just sent it to me too. I took the same screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got like blood red eyes. It's, it's a slutty little cow. It's like it's like it's cow. doing back shots. It's <laughs> the craziest thing I've ever seen. I, I first I was like, is it like a is it like a bell? Uh, is it a coin bank? But I think it's literally just like a sexy cow. It's just a little knickknack. It's just a sexy little slutty cow. Oh my god! It's so, yeah, because the yeah, because he rings the bell next to it. That's yep. so great. I can't believe we picked the same one. I can't believe it. an unbelievable tchotchke, but uh, one that I think i need on every desk i own from now on uh it's such a slutty looking cow. like <laughs> maybe i should post this when the episode drops it's such a slutty looking cow <laughs> it is the cr- just in no explanation that's just the caption mm-hmm. i lost my mind when i saw it hashtag slutty cow Ugh. um well then my prop i'll go with one of my backups okay. i'm gonna go with uh alma's retractable garrett yeah that's a good one pretty cool i was also a big fan of the leopard print shirt that the dude wears when he's killed with the the beer bottle oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 in the club scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, Nathan, I think we have our uh, pick of the litter when it comes to bit parts. Totally. There's a ton of extras in this movie, a ton of background characters or characters with known names. And uh, it would be so fucking funny if Nathan <laughs> and I were one of those people yeah. in this almost exclusively non-white movie. Sure. So, Nathan, who do you want to be in The Night Comes For Us? In the last scene when Aryan is executed, there is a bald guy who is just like doing the most with like a sort of intimidating head. Bomb. Mm -hmm. He just like sort of nods after he like stops firing. It's pretty (laughs) great. And he's got like these sick chest tattoos. I was going to go with one of the butchers that gets the Texas chainsaw treatment and gets Mm. put on the fish hook. (laughs) Yeah. But I actually going to go with the guy we talked about, which is the guy that Ito just spins around like on top of his head and uses a human shield against all the guys going at him with machetes. Such a good pick. (laughs) Because that means that uh, Joe Taslim gets to pick me up and swing me around (laughs) a little bit. That's true. That's (laughs) true. Well, our work's cut out for us. We need to find the silver lining for the night comes for us. Mm -hmm. So... What do you got? I'm going to disagree with your hope for the ending here (laughs) and just say Ito doesn't have to fight anymore. Okay. He's free. He redeemed himself. Yeah, I think he finally did one good thing at the end of his life. Yeah, and that's all you need to get into heaven, apparently. (laughs) That's what he said. I think he almost exactly says that. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, joke's on you. I'm getting into heaven, boys. (laughs) I went with that uh, all of Ito's crew did their duty to protect Reina. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Even though these are like considered some scumbag guys, they all did what was right at the end. Mm -hmm. And she survived. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Would it be cool to do like a uh, kind of like a Kill Bill Volume 3 that was oh, talked yeah. about like Reyna grows up, you know, gets revenge for all this stuff? That'd be cool to see. Infiltrates the six seas. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah. I like that. Well, like we talked about this movie and just on a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Like we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, presumably we know. But uh, even if that happens, I don't want to see Ito go. I'm bummed out. Sure. I want to see more. So what's a good movie people can double feature with The Night Comes For Us that the scale tips a little more favorable uh, by the end of things? What's a movie you're going to watch after? I would recommend people uh, check out uh, the director's film before this one, uh, Headshot. I'm interested in seeing Headshot now. <laughs> which has Iko Oyes just wrecking house mm-hmm. the entire time. Uh, it's actually a bunch of actors from this film, including Julia Stell. And it's uh, a, a little bit more uplifting, I think, than this one. Okay. But no less absolutely batshit crazy violent. There's a sequence involving Iko Oyes, like handcuffed to a desk in a police station. Oh, and then a yeah. bunch of dudes come in with guns and he has to just like use the desk as a weapon. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It rules. God, we we just do not know how to make action movies anymore. <laughs> George Miller is like carrying the torch for us here in the States. Yeah. And, you know, Chad, what's his face from John Wick is doing his best. It's the yeah. Yeah, he's doing his best. But, uh, you know. I like the John Wick universe, but the more I see other action movies from other countries, I'm like, man, what are we doing? Right. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm going to go with... I'm going to give two here. Okay. I'm going to give one for Mally since he's not here. Okay. This first one will be his pick. Uh, I'm going to go with another movie about someone going against uh, their employer to protect a kid with a lot of collateral damage in the wake. I'm going to go with James Cameron's Aliens. Hell yeah. And then I'm going to go... With my pick, uh, another movie about someone to trying to protect a kid with a lot of collateral damage in the wake. <laughs> I'm going to go with the uh, not well known, but really worth your time, Midnight Special. Oh, yeah. With Michael Shannon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jaden Martell, who I love. Yeah, that movie rules. Yeah. Another one that I think people kind of slept on, but yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. Speaking of really good, this movie, yeah. given a thumbs up, I think, uh, you know, Cisco and Eber here, me and you, we're thumbs up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, go go check this one out. If I would say 
if you get into that butcher scene and you're like, this is too much violence, yeah. uh, maybe maybe pass on the rest of it. But sure. if you don't have a weak stomach and you like crazy martial arts choreography, it's it's hard to do better than this one. Yeah, I would say also if you're a fan of The Raid, you'll probably dig with this one. Yeah. Although, I will say this movie does have a very different feel to it yeah. where Gareth Evans, I feel like in The Raid, is really going for a rhythm. Mm-hmm. Like he wants the editing and the choreography to feel like it's got a rhythm to it. Yeah. This movie, not so much. This movie is just visceral. Yeah. And uh, it's body horror by way of gun fu and martial arts. I, I would honestly <laughs> say this movie has more in common with The Raid 2, yeah. which which is uh, definitely a little bit more plot driven and and has a kind of Grand Guignol kind of scope to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I said, this has got a lot of body horror to it. Like, yeah. if you don't want to see broken bones and limbs and, you know, things like that, stare clear. Right. But, uh, yeah, it, it truly is one of the bloodiest movies I've ever seen. And it's not a horror movie. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all I've got to say about uh, The Night Comes for Us. Any, Same. any closing thoughts? No, any? I think we nailed it. All right. Well, uh, if you want more of our show, we've got a ton of episodes in the back catalog. And even though we're starting off 2024 with uh, some violence here, you know, we've got plenty more episodes to come. So, stay tuned. Mm-hmm. If you haven't already... Subscribe, rate, leave feedback if you don't mind. We really appreciate that. Last week, Miley said that we don't need five stars from your ratings, <laughs> but uh, I would appreciate that. Sounds like the kind of shit he'd say when I'm not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh, he had his head in Der Vulcan, so, you know. <laughs> If you haven't already, you can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can just search the Silver Linings playlist and find us there. And you can also go to reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings playlist. And, uh, you know, there's a plethora of information about the show there. Mm-hmm. Discuss the movies and all that good stuff, too. Uh, if you want, lastly, to get in touch with us, you could do so by emailing us at gmail.com. Oh. Yep, just at gmail.com. That's it. That's it. At the Silver Linings playlist <laughs> at gmail.com. Yeah, I got a very exclusive email address. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the night comes for us. Yeah. We're actually going to be staying in the uh, the Asian films with our next film that we're talking about next week, yeah. which is my pick. And uh, my clue for what we're talking about next week is be sure to bring your Sakume candies. Oh, man. Yeah. This is uh, this is one I have never revisited. <laughs> and uh, I have I have been both anticipating and dreading this next movie. It is a an undisputed masterpiece. I will yeah. say that. Yeah, no, I agree. I've only seen it once. And I was like, I got it. <laughs> and I decided to uh, plunge us back into the world of it. But I also feel like it's going to be very fitting considering, uh, you know, some Oscar movies that are going to be getting nominated for soon. Totally. And uh, some movies we're going to be talking about later on this season, probably. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But it's also, uh, if I can offer one other clue, Yeah, it is also the first time we're covering a movie of this type. Yeah, that's true. 170 plus episodes, and we have yet to cover this kind of movie. Hardcore pornography. (laughs) (laughs) We're doing it. We're following 365 days, eat your heart out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'll say uh, rest in peace, Oatmeal and uh, White Boy Bobby. Yeah, and absolutely. <laughs> Wiznu and Fatih and everyone else. So uh, Everyone in the triads. Everyone. I feel bad for them. Rest in peace, fell. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as always, this sounds like a fucking gangster movie, don't you think so? <laughs> <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Ah, dang it, Bobby. I'm gonna kick your ass. And that wraps up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!